Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctish Channel. Soldiers and sailors get a lot of mail, including packages from Amazon and other major retailers. This is all managed by a sub-branch of the military known as the U.S. Military Postal Service. The Navy's postal system consists of a group of regional fleet post offices, which are installed at naval bases all around the world. Of course, Navy ships often travel in formations known as battle groups or strike groups. In such situations, mail, including packages, needs to be carefully rerouted to a ship's specific location at any given time. Whenever a ship like the USS George Washington comes into port, many men and women need to stay behind to help replenish the vessel's store of supplies, including packages and mail. It's not uncommon for logistics specialists to take on dozens of pallets of food, equipment, supplies for the ship's stores, and other important materials all at once. In fact, it can take an entire logistics team from the naval base and the ship working a full 24-hour day to get all the supplies counted, carted, and stored away. As difficult and time-consuming as port replenishment can be, it pales in comparison to underway replenishment. In this situation, two vessels will pull up next to each other without stopping. Sailors will then pass a line between the two ships, allowing for the setup of transfer cables. Using this method, the ships can pass tens of thousands of pounds of equipment, supplies, and ammunition from one vessel to another without having to deviate from their course. Establishing the lines properly can take a lot of practice and coordination between teams. This is why shore-based drills like this one are so important. By learning how to set up for underway replenishment while stationary, these sailors will have a much better chance of performing efficiently when they're out in the middle of the open ocean. Aside from moving pallets of supplies, these ship-to-ship -ship cables can be used to pass fuel lines from tankers to waiting vessels. Allowing them to fill their tanks with fresh fuel no matter how far they are from the nearest port. The final and most impressive way to get supplies, mail, and other important cargo to a naval vessel is known as vertical replenishment. As the name might imply, this process utilizes helicopters to move supplies from either ship to shore or ship to ship.
Here you can see the USS Carl Vinson receiving ammunition from the Black Knight's helicopter Sea Combat Squadron. The helicopters use their cargo hook to carry pallets of munitions to and from the vessels. while deck crews use forklifts and dollies to move the deliveries into place. Once everything is aboard, the USS Carl Vinson crews place the ammunition onto the ship's elevators for transport down into the ship's magazine. Typically, munitions are stored in these rooms, called magazines, located inside the ship below. Vertical replenishment is by no means limited to just ammunition. Food, cargo, and other supplies are commonly moved in this manner, particularly when the seas are too rough for direct ship-to-ship -ship movement. Over the years, the Navy's logistics operations have relied on a wide range of different vehicles. However, few have proven more versatile than the V-22 Osprey. This unique aircraft is the result of a collaboration between Boeing and Bell Helicopter. It is known as a tilt rotor aircraft, which means it combines the speed and carrying capacity of an airplane with the vertical takeoff capabilities of a helicopter. Thanks to its massive, oversized rotors, the powerful Osprey can carry up to 20,000 pounds of internal cargo or around 15,000 pounds via its external hooks. Its 57-foot fuselage is big enough to carry around 32 troops, and it has become a favorite among Marines looking to enter and exit combat quickly and efficiently. The CMV-22B is the specific Osprey variant for onboard delivery. It features an extended range fuel system, a high frequency radio, and a public address system. Before the V 22 Osprey took over as the Navy's primary carrier onboard delivery aircraft of choice, the job was primarily handled by the Grumman C 2A Greyhound. The Greyhound is designated as a carrier-capable transport. It was first introduced back in 1966, but only a handful was made. Still, this high-winged twin-engine prop plane was well-suited to the job of ferrying mail, cargo, replacement parts, and other items to aircraft carriers all over the world. With a 10,000-pound payload limit and a top speed of around 400 miles per hour, the C-2A can travel more than 1,300 nautical miles at a time. With its 80-foot wingspan and 56-foot fuselage, the aircraft has the lift and slow speed control needed to operate from a carrier flight deck. 
Its wings even fold back to help maximize space when it's being stored aboard the ship. Aircraft carriers sometimes stay at sea for six to nine months at a time. With thousands of people on board, it's not hard to see how important it is to have the right amount of cargo and supplies. Indeed, simply feeding an aircraft carrier crew requires thousands of pounds of food, and that's on top of the weapons, ammunition, tools, and replacement parts necessary for the ship to perform its mission. So even after delivery has been made, the logistics team's job is far from over. These men and women need to tie down, store, and rotate heavy pallets of supplies on a near daily basis. Not only do they need to be organized enough to know where everything is, but they must make sure any perishable stock is stored in a way that the oldest will always be used first, preventing waste. It's important to remember that aircraft carriers and other large battleships are much more than just weapons of war. For instance, the Nimitz-class aircraft carrier USS George H.W. Bush has more than 5,000 crew members in her company. That's a lot of people sharing a space that's 1,000 feet long and just 252 feet wide. For this reason, the Navy has gone to great lengths to make its crew members and visitors as comfortable as possible. Ships like the George H.W. Bush feature a number of just-like-home amenities. including a ship store, where a vast array of foods, snacks, energy drinks, and even clothing is sold. There's even a branded Starbucks shop aboard the USS Carl Vinson, which allows sailors to enjoy a hot or cold cup of joe at the beginning or end of their day. Amenities like this are a great way to make the cramped, often crowded life aboard an aircraft carrier a little more comfortable. Ultimately, one of the biggest and arguably most important jobs aboard an aircraft carrier is feeding the crew. A ship like the USS Harry S. Truman has a total of seven galleys on it. These facilities prepare around 17,000 meals daily and employ as many as 114 sailors to ensure they get the job done. Estimates say that an aircraft carrier crew's average daily food intake can be as much as 1,600 pounds of chicken, 160 gallons of milk, 30 cases of cereal, and 350 pounds of lettuce. From hamburgers and pizza to eggs and bacon, there are tons of options available for consumption, which means ranging from the mundane to the gourmet. Many of the men and women who work these galleys take great pride in feeding their brothers and sisters in arms. And though their jobs might not seem as glorious as that of a pilot or gunner, Every single member of the U.S. military supply chain is essential to the success of the ship's mission.
that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.